welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, we're talking about Team 7 AM and European professional esports. My guest is John Smith Howell, the managing director of Team 7 AM. Welcome, John. Hey, thanks, Catherine. It's great to have you back. I know you were on uh, a bit ago last month uh, to talk about the Esports Trade Association, but now we're going to talk about Team 7 AM. Tell us about uh, the team. Yeah, so we're a European uh, esports organization, um, uh, mainly concentrating on uh, professional and competitive play, um, but we wanted to ensure that we had a community vibe and feel uh, about us as that's something that's really important to us. Um, we've been going for just over two years now, uh, and we've seen tremendous uh, growth in that last two years, uh, which has been fantastic. And, um, you know, we're continuing to grow. Uh, we have more game titles and more teams than we've ever had before um, and uh, new sponsors and supporters, uh, which is which is fantastic. So has did Brexit impact you at all? Absolutely not. <laughs> well, that's good. And you're located in England then? Yes. That's yes, I am. Yeah. All right. And uh, so let me ask you, why did you name it Team 7 a.m.? Um, so actually, it was uh, purely just for, for marketing. Um, so I, um, I've been in the esports industry for, for a long, long time. Uh, and I knew and seen that esports and business were coming closer and closer together. And the esports wasn't just about teams anymore and, and sort of playing with friends uh, and competing, but actually it was moving into this business space. Um, so when I wanted to create a brand, we wanted it to be something that was easy to say, uh, easy to remember, and uh, have a logo and a brand that was easy associated to to us. Um, taking in inspiration from the McDonald's and the Burger Kings, and you know all these high street chains uh, that you only have to see their logo and you know exactly who that brand is. Uh, and that's what we did. We took inspiration from that and created something short, snappy, um, and um, yeah, this is it. Team Seven AM. Do um, esports act, uh, athletes actually get up that early? Um, I think they're more likely to go to bed at that time than get up at that time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. And so what game um, does Team 7 AM play? And so currently we're competing in uh, League, of Le League of Legends, uh, Valorant, uh, Rainbow Six, uh, and uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Okay, and how many teams do you have? Uh, we have five teams. Okay. And are they professional or uh, pro-am or how, do, how does that work? Um, so our league team, uh, League of Legends team, main team are professional. We have an academy team uh, that back those up, um, again, to just encourage um, bringing in those academy players, getting them up to, the, up to speed and where we want them to be, and then um, getting them into our main team. Um, our Counter-Strike team also uh, play at professional level, um, and so do our Valorant. Uh, our Rainbow Six team are sort of... Um, you know, just get in there. I would say they're probably at the semi-pro uh, stage at the minute, um, and uh, but they're 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 really they're really fighting hard to, to to get up there. And are you only playing in Europe, or are you playing all over the world? Uh, so currently, we're just playing all over Europe, um, and uh, of course, you know, the 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 end goal is to to be playing internationally. Okay. And um, have what kind of tournaments have you been playing in the past year, and how have you been doing? Um, so the biggest tournament uh, that currently we've played so far is probably one called the Belgium League uh, for League of Legends. Um, it's a European uh, regional league, uh, and it's the only way that a team can um, fight for a spot into the European Masters. Um, and um, so that is an invitation-only league. Uh, there's only six spots. Uh, in our league and we're very lucky to have uh, have an invitation there um, we didn't do too well this season unfortunately we did finish last of our group um, it was a very tough season for for our team um, that split has just finished and and then we are now preparing for the summer split uh, which will which will start at the beginning of june um, for our Valorant uh, team, the, uh, they have been playing all of the new European tournaments. Um, obviously, Valorant is still a fairly new title uh, on, the, on the scene uh, and has seen a humongous growth uh, from every aspect. Um, so they're playing every tournament they can, um, uh, including the, uh, the, the Masters tournament, uh, the VCT. So are your teams made up of only men or do they include um, 
women as well. Um, so currently all of our players are, are male. Uh, we do have females in the organization, um, but to, to us, it doesn't matter if they're male or female. If they have the skill, the ability and the mindset uh, that we would like, then it doesn't matter who they are to us Then and they fit our brand. It's not a problem. Perfect. And so um, we, you know, always hear that you know, players are usually between the ages of 18 and 25. Is that the case with your, your team? Uh, yeah, everybody, uh, I would say maybe there's one or two players that sit outside of that, but predominantly between 18 and 25, all of our players. Do you foresee that at some point the well, players will be uh, older or do you think it's always going to be the, those ages? Um, I mean, like my generation, I, I started playing in 1999. So um, I, you know, I was well within that bracket. Uh, and then I still continue to play after 25. Um, but you slowly but surely realize that um, you, you can't keep playing. You can't keep dedicating the same amount of time that maybe you did before. Obviously, things like careers and um, kids and girlfriends and relationships always get in the way. Um, so ultimately, you start to look at other areas uh, of working within esports. Um, I think that gap will extend uh, both ways, um, especially down as we, we're seeing a huge influx of uh, of the younger players that are coming in, especially within games like Fortnite. Um, but that's expanding very, very quickly. Um, I, I, I think in the next few years that it will be the norm to see 15 year olds to sort of 25, 26 competing full time uh, within esports. Sure. And uh, what is your role uh, with Team 7AM? Um, so I'm uh, one of the co-founders and I'm the managing director. Um, so I lead from the front uh, and um, try my best to uh, guide and uh, pull all of the strings uh, in the same direction to try and uh, drive and push uh, the business forward. And what other um, uh, player, I mean, uh, what other personnel are involved? I mean, you have coaches and whatever. Like uh, yeah, like I said before, esports is now a business. So like any uh, sort of normal business that you would see, we have a senior team uh, that makes up of different managers. Uh, we have project managers and team managers. Uh, and then we have coaches and sort of operations um, people that just support uh, and get involved with anything they can. We have a community manager. Um, so it's not too different from any other um, sort of business you see out there. You know, we still have to do all the normal things and have a marketing department and, and look at graphics design um, and social media and brand awareness. Uh, we still have to have an accountant. Um, so it's not too abnormal from a normal external business, really. And are your players, um, are they streaming as well as playing? Uh, some do. Um, some do stream and some just play. Uh, I think there's still a huge um, gap between people that want to do both. Uh, a lot of the time that's hardware based. It's, uh, it's quite tough to stream um, on and play on one PC. A lot of the top streamers will have a PC that just streams and then they play on a secondary PC um, so that they don't have any uh, sort of hardware issues. Um, so I think it's still quite mixed with, with who can uh, stream and play at the same time. So do you have tryouts or what are your criteria for um, selecting uh, players? Um, so we will hold tryouts, um, but most of the time we will scout uh, individuals um, before that, and then we would go uh, approach those individuals. Uh, we go through an interview and selection process uh, like you would do for a normal job interview. Uh, we really want to understand their, um, their mental health their what, what they want to achieve you know where, where what do they want to do are they just playing for fun do they want to compete do they want to go all the way and these things are, are really important to us and, and where we can fit them in into our team um and then yeah once we have a pool of of candidates as such uh, we will then do some tryouts uh, and see who uh, who can walk the walk so why is mental health um important uh, it's absolutely crucial. Um, I think it's one of the most important things that you can take in consideration. Um, 
anybody that doesn't say that esports and playing competitively isn't stressful um, to to me is is lying. It's 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 extremely stressful, and the reason mental health is so important is because there it, it is a process of learning. You need to lose games to learn. And losing is not easy, whatever you do in life. People don't like losing board games of Monopoly, let alone losing competitive games that they're playing against other people or people that they know. Um, and it's how you deal with that loss. It's what you do with it, how you process that, process that in your mind um, and how you reflect on that. And that comes from mental strength um, and having the support of people around you, like myself, who've, who have played uh, at that level and been around for so long. Um, to to support them mentally, let them know that it's okay to have down days. It isn't. It doesn't mean that you're not good enough. Um, it means that you're mentally tired and you need to take a break. Um, and sometimes you just need to structure the way that you practice. Sure. And we do have a, a question from a viewer. Um, could you explain how someone making a um, someone makes a living as an esports gamer? Uh, do you live off the money you make from winning competitions? Do you get sponsors? Um, so um, was that as a player, sorry, or was that as an esports organization? As a player. As a player. So as a player, you would you would start to rely on a salary. Um, so our League of Legends team uh, will be uh, are salaried. Um, so they will get a salary every month, uh, like you would do in a normal job. Um, esports salaries aren't uh, aren't the greatest at the minute unless you're playing sort of world-class uh, tier one um, events uh, then of course the salaries are fantastic um, but so is the pressure that uh, that goes with that um, so initially you would you would you would get some sort of salary uh, you would then get a percentage of any prize money you win depending on who you play for and what organization and what agreement is in place um, uh, but most of them will most most players will still back that up with another job a part-time job or maybe they're in education um, so they don't need to work and they're living at home uh, or, or in a good environment to be able to put the time in. Sure. And um, do you, how does the uh, team make a living? What's shifted over to the team? Is that sponsorship and uh, uh, primarily? Absolutely. 90%. Um, if not more, it has to come, the revenue has to come from sponsorships. Um, it's still the big question that we have in esports that is unanswered is how else do we monetize uh, esports? Um, you know, sponsors is a fantastic way and it's, it's currently really the only way uh, that we can achieve that. Um, there is other revenues that uh, will start to come in over the next few years, including TV rights, as we start to move into more towards the traditional sports, uh, and you have these huge TV channels who are picking up games and events, um, they're going to have to pay out TV rights, uh, which will, will cause a big issue for Twitch, uh, who of course, you know, don't pay out at all when they're streaming your games. Um, so that will see a shift um, in that, but currently it is it is mainly just sponsorships. You can't rely on income from tournaments because you don't know if they're going to win. Uh, of course, you can sell merchandise, and that will also bring some profit in. But essentially, you want to try and keep your your prices down so that you can sell and have the have your supporters and fans uh, be able to actually wear your merchandise rather than rely on that to make profit. And do you have any team houses? Uh, not at the minute, no. So everyone uh, lives independently, but do they practice together or with uh, COVID, are they just practicing um, online? So everything is done online at the minute and has done obviously for the for the last sort of uh, uh, 18 months during COVID. Um, of course, within the next uh, year or two, we would love to get a gaming house and get teams together. Um, and of course, arrange uh, boot camps uh, so that our players can can ultimately meet uh, and train and practice together and build that better bond and relationship. How, how has um, the pandemic affected your organization? Um, so it's going to sound quite horrible, but actually, it's helped us massively. Um, I think what it's done is it's um, it's shown the the retail world and the world that had, didn't have a digital presence um, before COVID that if you don't have a digital presence and you're relying on retail um, 
sort of sales or walk past your store sales that actually you don't have a business because people can't walk past and they can't walk into your store. So we've seen this huge insurgement of companies who now want to get involved in esports or get involved in digital presence. And for me, there is no better uh, industry to rely on for that. Uh, we've uh, the esports and the gaming communities have been were the first on the internet and we've been doing this for a long long time there isn't a better industry that knows this as good as we do um, and how to engage and really put someone's brand uh, where they need it in front of um, you know, the potential buyers of whatever that may be and as gaming uh, has been around for so long and people of my age generation who are, who are still playing are still involved well we need cars and houses and house insurance and every other product that you can imagine that would normally you would see in a tv advert we can now do that online uh, because they're not watching tv they're watching their screens um, and uh, it's that transition period that we're going through how important do you think the um the Gen Z market is to advertisers because I know that esports really uh, attracts uh, younger people. But it tracks it. I I, uh, I think it tracks everybody, and I think if you look at the statistics from uh, in the United States and from Europe. Um, there is a huge percentage of people that sit between 25 and 35. Um, and, um, you know, that is a prime market. Most of these, most people within that age bracket have a career, they have a job, they have an income, they have disposable income. These are the, the these are the people that we really want to aim to. Um, and um, that is the, that, and that's the, what we, what brands are going to get to. That's what we need, you know, to advertise to. Um, it's really important that everybody's involved. Of course, the younger generation as well, because we, we can also advertise to them, whatever that may be, new games that come out or um, of anything really. Now, is Team 7AM um, selling merchandise as well? Uh, yes, we currently just sell uh, this jersey that I'm wearing now, um, and um, but we, we will be uh, bringing out uh, new new merchandise over the next couple of months. Maybe some caps or some hoodies. Um, uh, not sure yet. So tell us more about um, what it was like to actually be a professional player. Um, um, it was uh, it was really fun. Um, it was pressured. Uh, it was it, but it was stressful as well. Um, you almost it's like having an out of body experience because everything else continues on behind you, but your mind and your focus is only on what you're doing on a day to day, and that is practice and developing your skills um, and reflecting on what happened yesterday. What am I going to train today? Uh, I played Counter Strike, so for me it was about developing uh, and continues developing my aim, my reactions, my thought process about what what I could do differently. Um, I was always the in game leader uh, for my team, so. I also needed to think about strategy uh, and how we can overcome enemies uh, and how we did that uh, and take in consideration how my players and my teammates, how they play, what are their strengths and what are their weaknesses. Um, so that was really tough. Um, but I've made some fantastic friends. I think I could travel most of the world and land in most countries and have somebody that I could go and visit uh, um, from someone that I know or have played with or have communicated with over the years. Um, I don't think I would ever have a bigger friend base um, than, I, than I would have ever imagined without being in esports. And so what advice would you give to uh, upcoming uh, potential uh, professional players? Um, I would say structure. It's really, really important that you have structure to your day. If you want to get out of bed at nine o'clock and start practicing, that's absolutely fine. But structure your day. So you practice maybe for an hour, an hour and a half. Structure what that practice is. I'll take Counter-Strike uh, as an example because it's something obviously that I know in and out. Um, if you're going to practice your aim, then do that for 30 minutes. Then do something else. Then maybe practice your reactions then do something else. Review a demo of something you did previously. Take a break, ensure that you're then going out, going out for walks, get some fresh air, uh, come back, start again. Ha don't just sit there for eight hours straight, 
practicing and playing because you won't actually improve and then when you look back and you think well i'm not improving i must be bad it's not that it's that your the, the structure that you're placing is bad um you can structure it correctly it's like learning at school you don't learn at school for doing it 10 hours a day it's structured into small sessions and then you have a break and then you have more sessions it's the exact same process um to get your brain to learn and this have this muscle memory just structure it out, take breaks, and always, always review everything you're doing and think, how can I do this better? Okay, because if you just keep doing it the same way, you're not really improving, right? Uh, well, well, this is it. And this is what Albert Einstein said, um, you know, that uh, insanity um, is doing the same thing over and over again and getting the same results. Um, so don't do the same thing over and over again because you are going to get the same results. You need to adapt and to, and to change and, and, and try something new. Um, and if you're playing for a team uh, and you're in a practice game or a scrim or whatever you, whatever you call it, depending on where you're from, um, those games aren't to win. It's the biggest mistake that every team makes. They go into these practice matches and they want to win. That it's not there to win, it's there to learn. Um, the only games you need to win are the league games and the official games. Everything else doesn't matter. It's all a learning process. Sure. And it, you know, it kind of reminds me of uh, being a triathlete and a swimmer for years. And I would go to the pool and like I would I would focus, you know, on a session. I would just focus on how my hand entered the water or how some little thing about like my head was positioned or you know, uh, kick off the wall, those kind of things, you know, just really focus on these little minute things. And so I, it sounds like that's, you, you know, to become better as a player in esports, you could focus on these, break it apart and focus on these small um, skills. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely right. It's 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 really important to to break it down and to and to focus on uh, on those smaller elements. Again, we'll take Counter Strike if you're if you're playing deathmatch and you're uh, practice with guns that you don't normally play with. Um, everybody will practice with the AK-47 or the M4 or the, the Desert Eagle because they are the standard sort of guns that everybody uses. But there'll be a situation where you need to pick up a weapon from perhaps an enemy that you're not used to playing with. Well, what are you gonna do with it if you're not good with it? So do something different. Make sure that um, other people's weaknesses are your strengths um, and, and you will see much more improvement from doing that. Sure, and also in anticipating other movements of the other player yeah it's 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 really crucial and uh, the only way to do that is just by keep playing and and um reviewing what you're doing so why did they do that movement what could you do differently should have you have took your time should have you have rushed further maybe there was some utility that you had that you didn't use again another vital piece of information if you're in counter-strike if you've died and you're, you're you're dead and you still had utility well, then why? Why aren't you using that to support your movements um, or to support your team's movement? It's not all about you. It's a team game. Um, just because you've got some utility, but your friend hasn't, uh, use it to their advantage. Maybe they have something you don't. Maybe he has a sniper rifle. Well, then let's prioritize your teammate. Um, it's a one-shot kill if he's using the AWP. So well, that should be our absolute priority to get um, to use as our weapon. That is our big weapon. Let's use our utility to support him and because he will get those kills. And ultimately, we win the round. And you win rounds, you win games. So um, we have another question for uh, from sure. Does everyone have a role in gaming teams? For example, someone on offense and another on defense? Yeah, everybody has a role. Um, I don't think there's too many games um, that I can think of that someone hasn't really got a good role. Whether those roles are variables and they will move and shift, um, I think that's a possibility. But in Counter-Strike, they tend to, and, and League of Legends, you tend to have one specific role that you concentrate on. Um, and I would say that if you don't know what that role is, um, you need to review the, the style of player that you are. So again, taking Counter-Strike, if you're somebody that's really aggressive and you like to run and do things really fast, well, then you need to be an entry fragger. You need to be right at the front of that team and you're pushing in and you're driving that team forward. Um, if you don't mind sitting back and, and, uh, and taking your time and you have patience, well, then maybe you should be lurking uh, and waiting for that enemy to come to you. Um, uh, every role is important. Uh, the best thing you can do is find out uh, what role you're best at and how that then fits into another team. 
Sure. And I know you have coaches too. What makes for a good coach? Um, support. Um, players uh, are stressed, um, you know, mentally they're tired. Um, and, you know, a coach needs to be there as a friend. A coach is a, if you have a five man team, he's the sixth player. He is on the team. He is supporting the team. He is helping them and guiding them. He is there to show and um, to to show you the things that you've missed that you didn't see. Um, he can review your demos for you, review your gameplay, um, maybe help you with communication issues. Um, the, the coach is a sixth player. He's just not on the field when you're playing those games, but he's just as important um, outside of those games. So tell, tell me about um, European esports right now. I know that um, Europe has been hard hit by COVID. How is Europe, uh, European esports doing now and what is its future? Um, so European esports is doing really well. Um, I think we have a fantastic talent pool, um, um, probably one of the best uh, in the world in, in most games. Um, I think the biggest issue we face in Europe is funding. Uh, lots of businesses are very reluctant to invest. And when they do invest, they invest much smaller amounts than, uh, let's, uh, than, than the United States, for example. Um, and that, that is something that's been proven recently uh, with League of Legends. Uh, that the L LCS um, has huge investments and huge money, but no talent pool, uh, whereas the LEC has huge talent pool, but no money. Um, and it's just a, and that's a big problem we have in Europe. Um, it's where that funding is coming from because businesses seem to be reluctant um, to invest currently. Do you think that that's changing or will change in the future? I think it will have to change as more global businesses get involved uh, who are willing to invest in anybody in Europe or, or, or in the United States because they can. Um, they're either going to have to join um, and get on the boat or they're going to be left behind. Um, and that's a choice that they're going to have to make. So I think it will change. And as TV rights and deals start to come into place, that will change. Sure, and I'll, I'll let you tell us um, how people can find you and get in touch with you and uh, then we'll uh, have to wrap it up. Okay, um, so on our website, team7am.com um, or our, our Twitter um, at team7am. Um, they're probably our best socials that you can kind of reach us on uh, and then you can join our Discord. Uh, feel free to come and say hello um, and um, yeah, engage with us. Fantastic. Well, John, thank you so much for uh, being on of the wide world of eSports today. Thank you. All right. And so uh, thank you to our viewers who sent in the questions and thank you for joining us today. Uh, make sure to tune in next week. My guest will be Dr. Christian uh, Kuzmich, an Austrian neuroscientist. We'll talk about new technology applied to training eSports players. See you then. <laughs>